You've lived through the Cold War, the fall of the Soviet Union, the disintegration of Yugoslavia. Did you think that in 2016, there would still be a Castro in power in Havana? No, I didn't. But let me add two points. First, you know, there are so many surprises for me. The big surprise was not that communism uh, uh, disintegrated in 1990. People usually say, who would have imagined this happened even 10 years earlier? But who would have imagined that five years afterwards, in 1995, you remember, uh, post-communist candidate Kwasniewski won over Lech Walesa. So in this sense, the persistence of communism is not a surprise. But nonetheless, I think, with all the pathetics of fidelity to revolution, uh, 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 resisting United States pressure, and so on and so on, I think all of this is nonetheless a realization of a very sad metaphor. We all know from cartoons, this classic scene, uh, a cat walks across the precipice and goes on walking in the empty air. And then it falls down only when it looks down and notices that there is no earth beneath its feet. Isn't that something the same going on in Cuba? The revolution it's was been going, going on, on though for It's been going on for a long time. And what's I don't know what it's like where you are in Slovenia, but here in France, it really has been a throwback Monday. Uh, the fault lines, the classical old school fault lines between the right and the left are back in the coverage of this particular story. Is it the same where you are? No, I think our reaction is more one of indifference. And I even think this is the right reaction. Because I think that the tragedy of Cuba was, well, let me tell you a wonderful phrase of the great French philosopher Gilles Deleuze. Si vous êtes pris dans le rêve de l'autre, vous êtes foutu. If you are caught into another person's dream, you are lost. Isn't this what happened with Cuba? People there were living in misery, inertia, but their country was caught in other person's dreams. Castro's dream, the dream of West European leftists, and so on. And that was the tragedy, not only of Cuba, but also of ex-Yugoslavia. These countries, which were not the same real socialist countries as the gray East European dictatorships. So West European leftists like them as a dream of, you know, maybe this is a different, authentic revolution and so on and so on. Unfortunately, in the case of my own ex-Yugoslavia, as well as in the case of Cuba, I don't think there was a difference. With all my sympathy for Cuba, heroic resistance to United States pressure and so on and so on, what ultimately matters for me as the one who is still a convinced radical leftist is simply, did Cuba provide uh, something that at least can serve as a kind of a model project for what a new socialism for 21st century should be? Or was it just a nostalgic, inert remainder of the past? I think, unfortunately, there is no potential for future emancipation. Uh, Slavoj Sla Žižek, just one final question on this. Our correspondent earlier, we spoke to him in Havana. He said, yeah. young Cubans, they have no illusions about uh, the way their country is run, and yeah. yet they feel genuine sorrow. 90%, he said, of those he's, he's been speaking to these, this weekend. Yeah, but for me, I see as a, nonetheless, a trained psychoanalyst, no problem in this. These two sides go together. On the one hand, this revolutionary sublime, maximal leader and so on. On the other hand, look at the daily life in Cuba. Inertia, misery, escapism in drugs, in sex, in pleasures and so on and so on. That's the reality of the revolutionary sublime.